All right. Hello, everyone. We are so excited to be here today. My name is Cornelia Robinson. I've been with Amazon for almost eight years. I started out in Northern Virginia, and I now reside in Seattle working with AWS. I lead a program that's called AWS in Communities, and we are absolutely focused on making sure that we are community obsessed in all of the places where AWS builds and operates our infrastructure. Today, I'm joined with a number of colleagues, Dwayne Comfort and Nishat, and we are going to be sharing information. I know that many of you have sent in questions and we're gonna do our best to provide some answers on what you can be prepared for as you start to think about transitioning into the workforce. So it hasn't been that long since we've been where you were and we wanted to provide some insight to share with you some tips so as we get ready to kick things off and go into our introductions, I've got a fun question that I want to ask each of you. And Nishad, if it's okay, I'm gonna start with you. Sounds good. And the first question is, what did you want to be when you were growing up? And what are you currently doing at AWS now? Thanks, Cornelia. Hi, everyone. I'm Nishat Akhtar. Uh, what did I want to be when I was growing up? I actually wanted to be a poet or an author. Um, and funnily enough, I think I have the same cravings now, and I want to go think about that maybe in the future and write something. That is still something that I want to do. Um, what I'm doing at AWS today is uh, I am a data engineering manager, um, and I run a data program for master data management and data governance within AWS um, and support uh, the sales and marketing organization. Excellent, Nishat. Thank you. And within AWS and Amazon more broadly, we talk about superpowers a lot. So I'm also going to ask you, what's your superpower and how do you apply that in your current in your current role? Thanks, Cornelia. So superpower, I think my superpower is um, I'm 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 full of energy. So no matter what I'm pursuing, the one thing that I am trying to put in is, you know, go in with a lot of positive attitude. Um, and AWS really is that perfect breeding ground for me because you're literally learning every day. And so that being curious and learning every day uh, works perfect for me and I'm able to uh, actually enjoy what I'm doing. Yeah, I definitely have to agree with you on that one. Let's turn to you, Dwayne. What about you? Um, so the first question was, what did you want to be when you were growing up and what are you doing now? Well, when I was growing up, I wanted to be a superhero, uh, namely, I'd say um, Superman, um, <laughs> because he, you know, he really he he saved the world, right? Everyone wants to to save the world. Um, what I'm currently doing is that I'm a data center engineering operations manager um, within AWS in Northern Virginia. I've been uh, doing doing this particular. Um, job approximately nine years, and 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 I and I'll, and I'll go a little further and, and talk about that, Cornelia. You know, you, I talk about kind of how we talk about how the what we want to be correlates uh, into what we're doing now. And, and what I see now is I have a big team, and um, I may not be saving the world, but I get to develop and and nurture a whole lot of growth in uh, in the organization that I'm in. Thanks, Dwayne. I think a lot of us wanted to wear capes as, as adults when we were little. Um, and I know you don't wear a cape now, but developing people, like you said, that is somewhat of a superpower. Are there any other superpowers that you feel like you're able to contribute to your to your role as you're pretending to be Superman in the data centers? <laughs> yeah, and I, and I would say, you know, um, team building. Um, I love to build teams. I, when I started, in AWS, there were only uh, three data centers at the time, and I've seen it grow to way more than three. And uh, so building those teams and, and seeing the teams perform, um, that, that brings me that satisfaction. So uh, that's my superpower. Thanks for sharing, Dwayne. How about you, Comfort? What did you want to be and, and what are you doing now? Thank you, Cornelia. So uh, for me, when I was growing up, I wanted to 
to become an, a medical doctor. Yeah, but along the line, you know, my love to break and make things, I have a very inquisitive mind. Like, I love to break things and make them. <laughs> so if I'm being given, like, a gift, I'm very inquisitive. I'll be like, okay, uh, what are the components that makes up this, this, this thing, this, this pen? You know, and as a result, I want to take it apart and, you know, and see what is made of and put it back together with the help of my family members of our parents. So, well... As I was growing up, you know, I, I learned and um, I was able to make an informed decision and I tilted towards the uh, cybersecurity field. Currently, I'm a security engineer with the Emerging Region team. So I came in as a cloud engineer and I was there for about two years and I made a switch to the security org. That was uh, January 2020. And it's been amazing. And I, my, I, I've been with this team for uh, five months now. And what we do is basically we work with uh, a couple of other sister teams, you know, to make sure that uh, other security regions, you know, they are clear of any security uh, vulnerabilities, you know, before deploying our applications in these regions. Thanks, Comfort. I always love hearing you talk about how you used to love to break things and make things. Um, so besides breaking things, what's your what's your superpower? And that would be networking. I love to network. I know that's like a vague word, but the ability to meet new people, ask the right questions and build like a social network. It's, it's, it's a huge job tool today. And in terms of building your career, it's very important. So for me, in my current job role, we want to be able to, to uh, liaise with other teams, you know, uh, with other stakeholders, you know, with clients and ask intelligent questions, as well as providing innovative solutions for our customers. So the ability to uh, meet with other teams, you know, ask questions, gather information, you know, get data and, you know, come up with a solution. It's a huge win for me. And so that would be my uh, super uh, networking. Thanks, Comfort. I've definitely seen that you are a great networker. Um, so Dwayne, I'm going to shift back over to you because we have a lot of certifications within AWS. Um, but, I, but I think that one thing our students are not completely clear about is what are some of the requirements to be in data center operations? You know, what kinds of courses are helpful for students who may be interested in data center roles? Yeah, Cornelia, for students interested in, in data center operations, um, there are two segments of data center operations. One is the engineering side, uh, which works with the uh, mechanical and the electrical plant. And then you have the IT side. Um, both you know, are equally important. Um, some of the actual training or schooling that you might want to have is, um, you know, you of course want to have um, some networking background. You, you might want to also have um, a good knowledge of hardware, systems hardware, um, that plays real good into what's done on the uh, IT side. On the electrical mechanical side, uh, understanding, um, you know, the basics of electricity, um, how electricity moves from one point to another, and, um, and and having a specified, what we really look for is someone who may have a specified talent, but we also, more importantly, look for someone who has the right attitude, who wants to get the job done and learn. So it doesn't take a whole lot of, of training. Um, but it does take a whole lot of effort. And um, that's what we're looking for, someone who's willing to uh, take that and uh, add that effort to it. Also, there are other positions throughout uh, Amazon and um, require some certifications. And um, to look at that, you can actually go to uh, aws.amazon.com um, slash certifications. Excellent. Thanks for providing that insight, Dwayne. Um, Comfort, you you mentioned that you used to like to break things, and we've got a number of students here who want to know how can they get practice now. So, can they practice in a safe environment where it's okay to break things before they actually enter the real world? Can you provide us um, with some insight there? Yeah. 
Thank you, Kalila. So, uh, yes, it depends, right? For AWS, we have a couple of tools you could uh, play around with, you know, depending on your strength and, uh, you know, the area we really want to uh, grow your career in. Now, for example, uh, within AWS, we have the AWS Educate platform where uh, you could get some free yeah. credits moving forward. And uh, the second one with uh, with AWS is we have this one year free program where you could uh, play around with AWS services like ELB, VPC, IAM. You know, you could play around these services and learn to see how it works. You know, you could build environments, you could break things and make things. So yes, the AWS platform, they give you the one year and you won't be built until the expiration of the one year program. Now, for outside of AWS, we have the A Cloud Guru, we have Linux Academy. So these are also good online platform you could uh, take advantage of, you know, to learn to see how AWS services work before going into our uh, uh, environments to play around stuff so that you know you're not working in uh, isolation or ignorance, you know. And uh, the other one would be uh, for those folks that are titled to a security, we have third party tools. So we have uh, Nmap, we have Jack the Ripper, we have Metasploit, so we have Big Scanner. So it depends. So these are some tools that you could uh, play around with just to enhance your skills moving forward. Great. And as students start to, to enhance their skills, you know, I think uh, the, the next question becomes now, how do I get an interview with Amazon or with AWS apart from applying online, you know, so that I can really showcase that, hey, I've learned these things. Now I want to put them to use. Can, can you provide some tips on what students can do besides just submitting their, their resume online? Yes. Awesome. So one would be I can't emphasize this enough. It's very important, social networking. Now for me, I'm, I'm gonna give this example. I got into AWS without applying, like I didn't apply online. In the past I did, but for me what helped was my a local network, you know, from LinkedIn. And I had the opportunity to attend some events, you know, Girls in Tech, Grace Hopper. So I was there and I had the opportunity of meeting with uh, AWS recruiters and engineers from different teams. We spoke, you know, I, I, I talked about my skills and the value I would bring into AWS. And so moving forward, they routed my resume to the right uh, manager, who then in a few weeks, they gave me a call for an interview. And that was how I, I got in here. So the first thing would be a uh, social network, you know, building that network, reaching out to people that, you know, trusted faculty members and trusted engineers or recruiters. Now, the second mm. one would be engaging or volunteering in technical or non-technical projects. Very important. Put yourself out there. This is the visibility. You know, you can have so much skills cock up on the inside of you, but if you don't have that opportunity, that avenue to innovate or to display what you have, then no one will see it. So it's very important. So, so how can you do this? I know within AWS, we have in my uh, previous team within the cloud engineering team, we have a program where you just have to apply on LinkedIn and you get called into the AWS building and you're given like a problem to solve. So based on your answers, you get called in for an interview. So I happened to be one of the interviewers and that was a very good avenue for people that didn't have to apply online to get an interview within AWS. So one is attend those events, Build those social networks and don't be afraid to speak out. Ask questions. Ask questions. The worst that can happen is a no, but at least you put yourself out there. So yeah, so that would be it for my end. I love that comfort. And it comes back to your superpower. You know, I think it's so important that we step up aside from our screens sometimes. We can, you know, get heads down and we're always just they call it screen time, right? Where we're behind our screens all the time, just getting things done. It's so important, like you said, to get up, get out, network on social media, but also in person when possible, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that nugget. Um, and Nishat, you know, can you talk about the importance of a resume? One of the, the questions that we received is, 
how can I improve my resume to increase my chances of being noticed? Because we know that, you know, networking will, will, only, will only take you so far sometimes. Uh, a lot of times it is, you know, a matter of submitting your application the traditional way, which is going online to amazon.jobs and then applying. But you've got to have a strong resume that stands out ab above the crowd. So, so how can students do that? Thanks, Cornelia. And I love Comfort's story about kind of networking and kind of getting the foot in the door um, story. I love it. Um, you know, resume is is the classic way, has been the classic way of getting the job opportunities and applying for these job opportunities. And it continues to be a very robust methodology in that process. So it's very important to get your resume right. Uh, my advice always with resumes is pick a central theme, the role that you are going into focus on that particular role and build your resume around it. Uh, if there's too much going on with your resume, then it's not gonna catch the recruiter or the hiring manager's eye because they don't know what role you're focusing on. So pick that theme and kind of build it around that. And once you've picked that theme, all your projects, initiatives, whether it's you know projects at school or uh, internships that you've done should be tied to that particular theme and highlighted. Um, and that often attracts a lot of us recruiters or hiring managers because you're looking at it and looking, okay, you have done project as a you know cloud engineer or you've done a project as a data engineer. And so this translates into the role that uh, they are hoping to get you in for. Um, and in addition to that, I would also say that be very precise and concise. I've seen like six page resumes, doesn't work. You know, it's the re the reader has no time to go through a six page resume. So try to make it very concise, precise to the point uh, of what you're aiming to um, cover there. Um, list down your technical skills, uh, you know, very clearly. So, you know, if you're looking for a data engineering roles, talk about uh, the data pipelines and the tools and trade, uh, you know, the coding languages that go into building that. Focus very much so into what those technical skills are, because that's what most of us are looking for. Um, and then I think in addition to the resume, I think another thing to consider is especially going back to Comfort's point of view of, you know, have the network and building that kind of um, the, your, your professional profile essentially um, in your resume and around it, you should also kind of build that pro professional persona of your, who you are, which means if you have GitHub contributions, if you have a LinkedIn page, make sure they're up to date, uh, they are uh, aware or they're, uh, they're out there for your recruiters and hiring managers to see and notice. Um, I know that I go through uh, every you know profile that is presented to me, not just on the resume, but also the LinkedIn, also to the Git GitHub contributions to evaluate the candidate that's coming forth. Um, so make sure that all of those are also very tight. And the last thing I'll mention is keep your resume up to date. An out of date resume is the one thing that we all don't want to go through. You know, you, your experience should be very much to the point, up to date when you're submitting it. Those were my kind of tidbits there. That was great, especially with tailoring your resume. You know, I think that's such a helpful tip because a lot of times students may go to a career center and they work on one version of a resume, but that's just one version. It may not be tailored to a specific role and, and tailoring it is going to be critical. Um, I also didn't didn't think about things like LinkedIn and GitHub and, and making sure that, you know, you're providing those references because they are additional references. Um, those are great tips. Dwayne, you know, is there anything else that you would add in terms of how someone can improve the chances of, of getting an interview with AWS, but also with other companies? Yeah, and, and to go along, those are all, all great suggestions. But the, the, and then I'm going to go back to, to Comfort's um, um, statement about networking. And there are groups that you can join um, that, you know, whether it's uh, you know, it's computer society, or um, I know that we have the um, engineers um, society. There are different societies that you can join or programs that also help you be get to network and meet people. And, and I almost guarantee you, um, with Amazon being the size that it is, that you'll meet someone from Amazon. And um, having that connection, that direct connection, to me is a, a great way of getting in. So it's great to network as well. 
thanks. So you all heard it here, you know, network, network, network. We're, we're, we're hearing this over and over and over again. I'm sensing a theme. So you've got to have your resume, you know, that should be together, your LinkedIn page, GitHub, but you also want to make sure you're getting out, meeting people, you know, letting your professors understand that this is what I want to do, you know, can you help me? Can you review my resume? Um, going out and meeting as many people as you can because you don't know what kinds of connections people have in different organizations. That's great. I love the theme here. Um, so, I, Duane, I'm, I'm going to stick with you on this right. one and it's, what do companies look for in entry level hires? We, we've gotten that question quite a bit. Yeah, and I think com companies, you know, as far as entry level hires go, um, companies look for someone who has the right attitude. Um, you know, you're coming into a position and you're new to the position or role um, and you're, like you said, an entry level. So you may not have the qualifications or skills that you think you may need, but um, trust me, coming in with a positive attitude, um, with uh, desire to want to learn and want to work with others and being able to, to get that across um, to your to the interviewer is, is uh, pivotal pivotal and um, you know achieving um, an entry level position. Um, I know that even sometimes um, I have looked at some uh, resumes or, or talked to some people as I interview that have been more technical in nature and um, they don't show me that desire or they don't show me that um, they have that attitude, that go get it attitude. And I'll choose the, the individual who uh, may not have as much experience, but exhibits um, those characteristics because, you know, especially at AWS, uh, we, we look for innovators. We look for people that uh, want to learn and want to do more. So coming in with that attitude um, and the entry level position is great. That's excellent. I'm happy that you reiterated it. When you, when you were talking about um, skills that you look for, um, for, for data center engineering operations, I wrote down networking, hardware, electric, but you also mentioned good attitude. And so I think that you really just, you, you hit it home in, in saying that it's not just about the hard skills, but it's also having that drive. You know, when people are entry level, we're not expecting them to come in being experts yet, right? So it's an opportunity to learn. You have to have that learn and be curious, um, fundamental um, thought process. That's one of our leadership principles at Amazon. Um, but what, what advice do you have for recent grads? Brilliant question. Thank you, Cornilla. So I have been there. You know, when I graduated from uh, my master's program, yes, I came into the real world. I could see the competition out there. So that's if I was lost. Like, okay, where do I start from? How do I beat this competition? Wow, okay, let's see how it goes. <laughs> and so, <laughs> this is my sincere advice. The truth is, this knowledge, this information can really never be exhausted. There is no one way or there's no right way i don't know how to say it but there are different avenues so just stick with what works for you but very importantly we have this foundation that you really have to know and you have to work on now to circle back with what nisha said very important the resume you have to work on that yes because i have seen some resumes where i'm perusing them like and you no know, wow i could see some errors you know just some vague information like Nisha said, have it concise, very important. And secondly, the organizations, I really love what Duane said, joint professional organizations, very important. Because from there, you meet with right network, you, you meet with some client holders, you meet with some stakeholders, you meet with some good people, you know, that could help you in projecting your career moving forward. Then the other thing I have is take advantage of the school program, I know we have some career resources in some schools, even upon graduation, you could still go back there and utilize them, you know, speak to your counselor and see how you could, you know, practice when it comes to interviewing. Mm -hmm. Those mock sessions, you know, have your resume perused, have your resume worked on, 
Yeah, so because I know within a certain period after you graduate, it's you don't have the opportunity to go back there. So you have to pay like external parties to have your resume payrolls. You can save some dollars and take advantage of the resources you have in school. The other one I have is improve on yourself. You know, after I graduated, I didn't just sit back and relax, just waiting. Quite Sarah, quite Sarah. Whatever we be, we be. No, you have to take the bull by the horn. And so what did I do? I had to go all out there and I got some personal learning. You know, I had to improve myself personally and I got some certifications. Because the truth is this, companies are looking for people that will bring value to them, that will bring value to the team and that will bring value to the company. So you have to make yourself a person of value because by default, people are treated towards someone with value, content. So improve on yourself. That can never be overemphasized. Now, the third one is, you know, I have said it before, <laughs> build that network. See, I know <laughs> it can take a long process. I know it takes time, but that is the best tool when it comes to job search and career projection. Very important. And the other one will be get to with referrals. Ask for referrals. Ask, yes, I did. Ask for referrals. And that would only happen when you have built the right network. Now, we have a couple of people applying online. Thousands of people, resumes coming in like every second. So if you can get a referral, trust me, it's gonna stand you out from among the crowd. The other one I have is attend those events. We have some professional events. We have meetups. We have grasshopper events. We have the Black Association of Engineering. We have a lot of events. And currently with this pandemic, we have some e-events currently happening. Take advantage of them. And even within AWS, we have some good events coming up. So what I do is I have these scripts I, I, I wrote. And if, we, when, if we, when we have some opportunities coming up, like I get alerts, like I have an alarm system and it just alerts me, oh, we have this event coming up. And I see, okay, how does this align to my goals? And I attend. So attend those events. Now, the other one will be amongst other things, everything will be all right. Because I've heard a couple of people, are uh, recent graduates reaching out to me saying, I've done this. I did this. I've done this. What else do you want me to do? I'm frustrated. Now, listen, trust me, I understand the struggle because I have been there. You know, and the last thing I'm going to say is get that internship. If you're currently in school, this is one advice I would give to my younger self. If I, if I have to go back in time, yeah, I, I would tell myself, get that internship. Please do. Okay. If you can get the internship, internship before you graduate, because this is going to give you the opportunity to harness your skills and build the skills you would need, you know, upon graduation. And so, again, if you're currently struggling, in terms of job search and you don't know what to do and it seems all doors are being locked you know against you just keep trying because the right door will definitely be open up to you same thing happened to me and i'm there yeah thank you Cornelia. yeah thank you comfort i actually want to stay right there um because one of the questions that we receive from a number of students is what's the best way to get started in tech if I have AWS certifications, but no AWS experience. Yes, um, good question. Thank you, Cornelia. The truth is, for me, I never had AWS experience. Yeah, I, I never had AWS experience. I just had, you know, working as a tech support and my previous roles, not in AWS yeah. there. Well, in school, I had to ensure that I played around AWS services. I volunteered hmm. on, uh, working on some AWS projects and that really helped me a lot. Yes, get the relevant experience. That would come either through competitions, either through school projects or build one or volunteer. Again, you can meet someone. Let's say, for example, hey, Dwayne, I can see you working. I, I don't know. You, yeah, for example, you can reach out to Dwayne, for example, on LinkedIn and ask, is there any uh, problem out there you're seeking solution for? You know, volunteer, you can never tell. I love to ask questions. I'm very direct. And so ask questions. 
And so you can never tell as a result of that, you know, you're able to provide a solution to some problems, some, com some complex problems. This is value. And this is something that would also, again, enhance your skills and build confidence in you. Now, the other one that can also uh, give you like a heads way is like we talked about those tools, you know, eCloud Guru, you know, um, Linux Academy and other third party tools you can have out there to build, you know, those, those uh, re relevant experience. So one is projects, two is third party tools, three internship and four reach out to people for projects. That's it. Thank you. Great, thank you. All right, Nishad, I'm gonna turn it to you. Um, could you share advice you would give to young women in tech who are, who are preparing for positions in large companies like Amazon? Sure, thanks Cornelia for the question. Um, I think the biggest advice I would give is to women in tech especially is, you know, going back to my previous response, pick a path and very be very consistent about what path you're picking and what you're marching towards. What career do you want? Um, and, and once you plan that out, just don't think about the short term. Just don't think about, I have to get into this company in this role, right? You need to figure out where that role is going to take you. Once you are in a big company, where do you want to really go? Make that plan, plan some milestones then apply. Uh, because more often than not, we just want to get into a company and you want to join that company. We haven't thought through where we want to go. We get in maybe, and then there's a little bit of a struggle moving forward. So plan it out. Make sure that you have some milestones planned beforehand. Because A, one thing that you know all women should realize is and acknowledge that at, at times your journey will seem a little harder than men around you. That's that is what it is right today. And I'm not saying that, you know, it should be one way or the other, but my point is that you, it will at some point of time, for, for reasons, plethora of reasons, you, you become mothers, there's families and whatnot, that things might seem a little harder. Um, so acknowledge that, just realize that that may happen and you know how to deal with it and how you work with it. Um, so in order to kind of count you know, counter that and make sure that you have a positive experience while you're growing in your career and while you're applying for these companies, make sure you, you are strong about what you're doing, what you want to do, and continue learning. Keep learning in that space. Mm. I love responses, of, you know, around just, just keep learning. Leverage your network and keep researching the area that you want to grow in, and don't, don't stop learning at any point of your time in your career. Ten years in, you're still learning it. Right. Um, I still say that I'm at Amazon every single day. I learn something new. And that's that's amazing for me. Um, and I've been in the industry for over 15 years. Um, but, you know, that's kind of the mindset that you need to go in with. Um, the other thing is, in terms of leveraging your network, don't be afraid of asking questions or asking for help. Seek the mentors, seek the sponsors around you, whether it's in school, whether it's your faculty, uh, whether it's a network that you have outside of that through LinkedIn, reach out to people. I mean, I'm going to back to the theme that Dwayne and Comfort both touched on. Networking in many different ways is extremely important because you are essentially building a cohort of people who are supporting you in one way or the other. Um, and sometimes that comfort while you're going through some struggles, maybe as a woman in tech, it is going to become a lot easier if there are people supporting you around you. Um, and then I would say the kind of bringing it back to the last thing where, you know, when you're looking at companies that you apply for, let's say you're looking at Amazon, look at the macro culture of that organization. Um, Amazon makes it really easy. We have 14 leadership principles that we basically all, everything is based on those leadership principles, whether it's hiring, whether it's, you know, promoting, we focus on those leadership principles uh, and it kind of sets the tone for our organization. Look for those things that tie to you. I would say that when I joined Amazon, the one thing that brought me to the to Amazon was those leadership principles. I felt like they, they embodied who I was and who I wanted to be and how I wanted to grow. And I just kind of got attracted by those principles and you know came in. So look for those things um, into where and how you want to grow uh, as a woman in tech. Uh, but at the same time, give yourself grace. Don't be super hard on yourself. Just figure out ways that you can you know learn and be successful. Thanks for that. Um, something that I wrote down as you were speaking about being a woman in tech is 
make sure you're strong in your space. And that really resonated with me because I also know that women are more likely to experience imposter syndrome, right? right. Imposter syndrome is, you know, the way that we define it, it's, it's a collection of feelings or a sense of inadequacy that persists regardless of you experiencing success. Right. And so, you know, I guess the follow on question then is, is how do you deal, you know, with imposter syndrome and, and overcome it? That's a really good question, Cornelia. And imposter syndrome is like really interesting to me because I don't think, I think 99% of workforce faces imposter syndrome in their lifetime sometime or the other. And we all do, whether you are very early in your career, very late in your career, it's something that is very natural. Um, and so I, I always feel like, acknowledge that imposter syndrome is actually okay. What is imposter syndrome? It's basically feeling that you are in a certain position because of luck, not because of your skill set, because of the experience, because of what you bring to the table. You just feel like maybe I'm just here because I just got lucky and I probably am not as good as the people around me. We all feel like that. Take that feeling, acknowledge that's okay to have. There is nothing wrong with having that feeling and not let that spiral into a vicious circle of not being able to then do it any more work or good work because you're feeling so down with it. Take that feeling and turn it to a positive aspect. Like let, let it be the fire under you to make you go learn more and go seek more knowledge. If you feel, take that and co convert into tactical steps. Let's say you're feeling an imposter syndrome in a certain skill set or a certain area because you're not able to deliver to a certain project. Figure out what's, what's missing. What is it that you probably need to go and learn a little more about to come back to the table and deliver, right? Figure those pieces and nuggets that why why are you feeling like that? Talk to people around you, right? So there, let's say you're a product manager and you're feeling like I'm a product manager, I'm growing, but I'm not able to put in into this product what I want to do uh, or develop the product. And then talk to product managers around you uh, who are um, hmm. doing well in your opinion and seek their guidance essentially to figure out where you might have to improve or you might be lacking, or maybe you, you're just perfect and you're doing really well and you're just bringing yourself down for no reason. So have those conversations, ask for help. Uh, it's, you know, in your career, 15 years, 20 years, if you're asking for help, there's nothing wrong in that. Entry level, ask for help as much as possible for, from people around you. Um, and so those are some ways of ultimately thinking about imposter syndrome is not bad. It's a phenomenon that happens to most of us uh, in our careers. And how do I convert that into something extremely positive and kind of grow from there? Thanks, that's helpful. All right, so Dwayne, I'm gonna ask you a question and it's mm -hmm. what are the expectations for a candidate to be an Amazon fit? I think the, what are the expectations for a candidate to be an Amazon fit um, I think having that, uh, and we talk about the day one experience, right? Um, a lot at Amazon. I think someone who's who can have a day one experience ten years from now is is what I'm looking for in a candidate. You know, I look at them and I and I think, you know, is this someone who gets excited um, when they do their do their job when they talk about their job? I mean, you hear comfort and you hear and the shot, you know, these are people that are excited about what they do and, and bringing others into, you know, Amazon and, you know, to, for them to experience that excitement. Uh, so having that excitement and that fire is uh, one of the things that I look for, uh, for someone to be a good fit. And, and another thing is someone who, um, and it's very, especially when you first come in, uh, you 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 really are afraid, I guess I should say, in any company when you first come in to take some risks. So what I look for is someone who's willing to take calculated risks. Um, you know, and, and because without that calculated risk, we can't have the innovation that we have here at Amazon. Um, you know, I, I've I've been here for nine years, and I think you touched on it. You know, every day. Um, it is new to me almost. I, I learn something 
every day. Um, it's not a day that goes by when I say, ah, that's the same day. You know, you are always constantly learning. So, you know, having that fire, being able to, um, you know, take risks. And then, like I said, uh, we talked about innovating. I talked about innovating earlier. Um, I look for innovative people. Um, innovative people, they, they help the company grow. They help me to grow as a leader. Uh, I look for candidates or new, new entry level people that come in. I learned so much from them that is, um, is actually, you know, kind of, it's very humbling to me because, um, you know, I've been in this, this business for almost 20 years and to be able to talk to someone who just started and I'm, I, and I get something from them and I, it, it's just rewarding to me. So, you know, having those, those traits will definitely help someone be a good fit for Amazon. Absolutely. That was great. Um, <clears throat> And I love that you said calculated risks, being able to take calculated risks and treating every day like day one. I think that it almost brought it full circle back to the beginning where Comfort was talking about, you know, as she was a kid, she loved to break things, you know, and now we're all talking about taking risks and not being afraid to to jump in and try new things. Sometimes things get broken when you try, but then you get a chance to put the pieces back together. Yeah. And then you learn from that, right? And so that's exactly um, what we've been talking about today. So thank you for that. Appreciate that. Thank you for the question. All right. So I want to turn it back to Nishat because one question that we got was, how does Amazon deal with biases during hiring? And would you mind um, giving your perspective there? Sure. Thank you, Cornelia. Thank you. Um, so there is a ton of rigor that happens within Amazon when we are hiring. We have a very high bar of hiring in terms of you want the best candidate. No, who doesn't want the best candidate, right? So we want the best candidate. But we have a very unique interview process that we have developed um, that kind of ensures that that happens and also ensures that there are no unconscious or explicit biases that happen during that process, right? So we our interview process, like we talked about, are we're heavily focused focused on our leadership principles. When we see examples of you know, various experiences that you bring to the table, no matter which, where you're coming from, if, once you bring those uh, experiences to the table and kind of are able to relate to that to the leadership principles that we're looking for, that's, that's a big win for us. You are a very valuable candidate at that point of time. We have a measuring mechanism there, which, which is not measuring you know, who, who you are, where you're coming from, your education, it, it's more mechanism that is based on, are you, are you, a, you know, somebody who can abide by those principles and live by this, those principles as, as part of Amazon, um, which I, like, I, I truly, truly love that mechanics part of that. Um, as part of the hiring practices itself, uh, a lot of, all the hiring managers have to go through some mandated training um, that we do. We just, just can't, you know, join Amazon today and tomorrow be interviewing another person to join into the uh, into Amazon because there is a certain level of training to ensure that uh, we are not going in with any certain biases whether it's affinity bias or any of such bias uh, coming into that so we take a lot of uh, you know pay attention to a lot of rigor and process around that in uh, in building an inclusive culture and ensuring that there are no biases in how we are hiring we keep on improving on processes like our job descriptions uh, should be the very inclusive we pay a lot of attention to that we work uh, you know the hiring managers and the recruiters work hand in hand to ensure that those uh, practices are abided by uh, we ensure that the managers are well trained uh, while they're going into this process um, and and you know we there, there are un, you know a number of trainings uh, that are assigned to anybody who is uh, getting into uh, developing and hiring the best as we hire more people uh, into Amazon. And it's, it's you know, we, uh, those trainings, not just, you know, it's not just a number that we, we are trying to abide to and get, a, you know, everybody trained. Those trainings are very meaningfully created and, and focused on how we can continuously remove these biases on a regular basis while we are hiring. Um, just acknowledging that is very important, but also putting in measures to avoid those biases is even more important. And we continue to work on both of those areas. Great, thanks for, for um, 
walking us through some of the measures that have been put in place. Um, so with that, I have a final question for each of you. And Nishat, I will start with you. And each of you are tenured Amazonians. What keeps you here? Why is Amazon such a great place to work? And then why would you encourage our students participating today to consider Amazon as a place to work? Thank you, Cornelia. And, uh, you know, I'll go back to my one of the statements I made earlier. Every day I learn something new and that just keeps me going. It is it's never a dull day at Amazon for me. And I, I really enjoy that. Uh, I get to challenge myself um, on a regular basis to do new things. I'm not doing the same thing every day. You know, it, it is it's it's a, a ground where you can keep learning constantly. Um, I get to work with extremely smart people around me and believe me, that is such a pleasure uh, to have all of these smart people who, who have been either at Amazon for a much longer than I have or have been in the industry for a while and are coming in with skill sets that are fresh and new uh, that I would love to kind of seek and learn. So for me, the biggest thing about being at Amazon and, and enjoying being at Amazon is the learning experience that goes with it. Thanks, Cornelia. Excellent. Thank you, Nishad. Dwayne? Yeah, um, great question. Um, for me, being at Amazon, uh, what, what keeps me here is, you know, I never come in a day and, and I'm like um, sitting there thinking, what do I have to do? Is there anything to do? It's always something to do. I mean, it's never when I get to work at 7.30, 8 o'clock, and it's never me looking at the clock, right? It's always, oh, it's, it's, I should have, actually, you know, they'll tell me, you should have already left. Um, you get so, there's so many things, so many exciting things to do that, you know, time just flies by. And, um, you know, I've been in positions or jobs where it seemed like, you know, that day just dragged on. And um, I promise you, <laughs> you will not have that at Amazon. You don't have <laughs> days that drag on. There's plenty to do, um, plenty of people to learn from. And everyone, you know, wants to help you. And um, and, and what I really like about um, being here at Amazon is that people want you to succeed. Um, you know, everybody wants to set you up for success. Um, you know, when I when I came in, um, I was given a launch plan, and that launch plan introduced me. You know, we talk about again, we go back to networking. But that launch plan, you know, it had me network with different teams and. And, and different, um, you know, groups. And, and what you'll find is that you can learn something continually from all of these uh, teams and groups. So what really keeps me here is just that 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 learning because that learning excites me. And uh, you know, I think anyone who who likes to learn and um, you know wants a, wants a more than a job, but you know wants a different wants a different way of life where they feel uh, fulfilled, um, you know, this is definitely the place to be. Great. Thank you, Dwayne. And comfort. Yes. Thank you, Cornelia. So Amazon is an amazing place. <laughs> it's a great place. Why? Because it fosters creativity. Now, it encourages you to keep thinking big, mm -hmm. to think long term, and to bring in new ideas. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you love to build solutions, if you love to work on complex projects, uh, you're welcome because you'd have so many opportunities to, to, to work on those projects. Yeah, I can, I can guarantee you that. And the other one for me would be, it encourages innovation, very important because, you know, in, in Amazon, we are encouraged to seek problems and build a solution, not just seeking the problem and going down to relax, no. So what can we do next? So yeah, those two, uh, those two things. Those are, those are the the major um, 
principles for me, like in terms of uh, what, in, in terms of why I'm still here, it is because of the, the creativity fostering and the ability to innovate, to build solutions. Yeah, thank you. That's excellent. Just to recap what I heard from, from each of you, it's you have the opportunity to learn something new every day as an Amazonian. There's always something that's that's new to do. You're not just sitting around watching the clock. Time flies because you're having fun. People want you to succeed, which is always a great environment to be in where everybody's rooting for you. Everybody wants you, you know, to set you up for success. You have a chance to think big and explore new ideas, act on new ideas, create new ideas, work on complex projects. And overall, there's a spirit of innovation that you feel like, you know, it keeps you here. And so students, we just would welcome you to join us. We're still super excited about being here. Like Dwayne said, every day is day one. Nishat, Dwayne, Comfort, thank you so much. For, for joining me today. And students, thank you so much for the, the excellent questions that you sent in to us. We wish you the best of luck. Uh, there's a, there is a worksheet that has been provided. It's a, it's a candidate resource sheet that each of you can follow. Um, it just, it reiterates some of the tips that we've provided and helps ensure that as you go through your journey that you have a positive experience, both um, as you seek employment within AWS, Amazon, or even elsewhere. It's important to us, you know, we wanna make sure that we're making an investment in you and in your future. And so again, thank you so much for your time today. We just enjoyed um, being able to talk to you, Nishat, Duane, and Comfort, and again, to the students and to AWS to Educate. Thank you for making this possible. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.